Hey everybody, welcome to episode 8 of the Bar Exam Mind podcast. This is Matt Racine speaking. I'm the author of Bar Exam Mind, a strategy guide for an anxiety-free bar exam, and the owner-operator of the barexammind.com blog. Now in this podcast I want to talk about how you approach the initial week or two of bar exam studies. And to do that, I would like you to think back to your first semester of law school. Now, if you were like most people and like me, the first two, three, four weeks of the 1L fall semester were probably scary, frustrating, overwhelming. You know, think about the terms you learned, jurisdiction. Oh, but wait, there's three kinds. Personal jurisdiction, subject matter jurisdiction, and the gorilla, or the elephant in the room, I guess, uh, in rem jurisdiction. I hope I'm not leaving one out. I could be. Uh, But the thing is, you sit there and you learn these terms, or I put that in air quotes, you quote, learn, close quote, these terms in the first few weeks of law school, and you just think to yourself, how am I ever going to understand all this in addition to you know negligence battery assault mens re actus reus defeasible fee estates all these kinds of things and the only way to do it is to just keep plugging away don't lose faith don't lose hope uh just keep working at it make sure you go to class make sure you do the reading make sure you start Uh, looking at some practice tests so you can understand what it is exactly you're supposed to know. You're supposed to cull from all this seemingly unrelated or at least seemingly impenetrable, inexplicable information so that you can at least pass your test, if not do really well on it. And that's kind of the approach you need to the bar exam. I remember when I first got my Barbary books and what was then called PMBR, it's now Kaplan, uh, my PMBR books to practice for the MBE in the mail, and they were a good foot and a half thick and weighed probably 40 or 50 pounds. I was completely overwhelmed, flabbergasted, whatever other superlative type adjective you want to use at seeing these books. And to top it off, when I began studying that first week, I got deathly ill with some kind of uh, stomach bug and uh, was down for the count for three days, lost 10 pounds, thought to myself, I'll never pass the bar exam, this is awful. Of course, I did pass the bar exam, but it took a few weeks before I even got into a space where I could say, you know, still a lot to learn, but I think... I can probably do this. I'd say that was about halfway through my bar exam studies. So what, week five or so, week six? And compare that with how you were in your 1L semester. I mean, if I remember my first semester, it was probably even later in the semester than halfway through. It was probably closer to maybe two weeks before the finals. Things started to click for me. I started realizing, oh, I need to memorize the elements of the causes of action, or oh, uh, I need to know that when I talk about point X in torts, I'm always going to have to talk about points Y and points and point Z because they just go together. Now, fortunately, when you start the bar exam, you've kind of had that process before where you've put things together. And even if you haven't gotten A's in all of your law school classes, you know, you've done well in some and you remember what it felt like to understand a class well enough to get that A on the test or get that A on the paper so that you'll have a sense of how that should feel as you're progressing through your bar exam studies. Now, if you're someone who had a less than stellar uh, fall semester of 1L, maybe your grades weren't that good, maybe you remain kind of confused about how to get good grades in law school, Think about what 
when it was that you did figure it all out? You know, was it the second semester of 1L? Was it the first semester of 2L? At some point, I know that you had to have done well during a semester, during a few classes. You know, focus on those times and think about what it was that you did to make sense of those classes. And that's what you're going to need to do when you're studying for the bar exam. I mean, I think the steps for success in the bar exam are as follows. One, expose yourself to all the material. Two, practice the material in the form of writing essays, in the form of answering multiple choice questions, in the form of doing performance tests. These initial practices will probably be pretty bad. You might only get 30-40% on the multiple choice tests. I think, if I recall correctly, I got 28% the first time I took a batch of 50 real property MBE questions, and I think the best score I got was maybe 45% on something like torts or criminal law, one of those subjects. So that was pretty bad. It was really disheartening. Uh, and also, you know, when you first write essays, you're going you're gonna to miss out. You're going to miss entire topics. You're going to probably get some elements wrong. It's, again, it's going to be disheartening. But, you know, you've still got eight weeks to go. Don't worry about it. This is why you don't study for the bar exam over the span of a few days. There's just too much to know and too much to practice, too many variables to account for. You need to see the topics over and over and over again. And so that's the essential part of studying for the bar exam. I think that's the essential part of success in law school, if you'll think back to it. You know, maybe in one class you hear something about, say, you talk about negligence. You go through the elements, duty, breach, causation, damages. And then... Maybe you spend two or three classes talking about different types of duty. Spend a little bit of time talking about breach, maybe looking at a few examples of breach, and then you talk about all that proximate causation and actual causation and all these things. It takes you know weeks, maybe months, depending on what your torch professor liked. And then you have all the pieces. Well, you got to put them all together. That's where the practice tests come in, right? And that, as you get closer to the final exam and torts, you write a few practice essays and go, oh, I see how I have to talk about, you know, this type of causation, and then I wrap it around a breach, or I talk about the duty, and maybe there was a duty, and maybe there wasn't a duty, but if there were a duty, then this is the breach, etc., etc. All those types of ambiguous, uh, different forks in the law and f forks in the facts as, as uh, the authors of getting to maybe... Uh, term it. You're just going to do the same thing when you're studying for the bar exam. I'm not going to say it's easy or quick, but it's something that can be done and lots of people have done it. So keep that in mind. Exposure to the topics. Practice. Exposure. Practice. Exposure. Practice. Memorization. Practice. Memorization. Practice. Take the test. Pass the test. All right, that's the end of episode eight. I hope it was of some use to you. Don't forget to please connect with me on Twitter at Bar Exam Mind and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Bar Exam Mind. Good luck on the bar exam. <laughs>